Hi, I'm Chris, and I've been helping beginners and non-coders launch their apps since 2013. And since you're here watching this video, I'm confident that I can help you do the same thing. This video series is for people who want to learn how to code. It's still a valuable skill in this age of AI. In fact, we'll be making full use of AI to enhance your learning and to help you gain coding skills as fast as possible. The success stories you saw earlier, those people didn't even have AI when they were learning to code. So I'm sure for you, it's going to be smoother, faster, and easier. On the other hand, if you don't want to learn how to code, you only want to use AI to build apps, check out this video over here. However, I will say that knowing basic coding skills, such as the ones I'm going to show you in this video series, it will save you hours of frustration and headache. And I know this firsthand because I've spoken with the people who have gone down that path only using AI Decode, and they tell me that they wish they knew basic coding skills. So I would still recommend that you go through this video series. Okay, moving on. This series has been updated for Xcode 26, and the cool thing about Xcode 26 is that it's called a built-in coding assistant which we are going to make full use of because we want to use AI to help you learn as efficiently as possible. Now, by the end of this video series, you'll be able to write and express simple app logic in Swift. You'll be able to build simple user interfaces in Swift UI. You'll know your way around Xcode 26. You'll be familiar with using AI to both help get you unstuck during your learning and to speed up your learning as well. You'll understand how apps are submitted and published into the Apple App Store. And last but not least, you'll have a plan on how to progress your learning after this video series towards the app that you ultimately want to build. So if all of that sounds good, let's get started. First of all, I want to give you a 10,000 foot view of how we build and publish apps so that you can see what your journey is going to look like. So we start off by downloading the official development app from Apple and it's called Xcode. Now this app does look a little scary when you first launch it. There's a ton of buttons and different panels, but don't worry, in lesson two of this series, we're gonna break it down. We're gonna make it very simple for you on how to use Xcode. Xcode is an app that is only available on Mac computers. This can be a deal breaker for many people, but if you don't have access to a Mac or you don't wanna invest in one, there are other ways such as Rent-A-Mac, which allows you to remote into a Mac from your PC, and then you can use it for development like that for a small fee. We can talk more about these options when we get to downloading and installing and using Xcode. But what do we do inside Xcode? Well, we write code. There's actually two different types of code that you write. One is called Swift, and that is to express the app logic and the brains behind your app. The other type of code that you write is called Swift UI, and UI stands for user interface which is just a technical term for the screens that the user sees when they're using your app. So you write Swift UI code to describe the screen and to build the screen of your app. Now, as you're coding your app inside Xcode, you're going to need to test it to make sure that it works as you progress. You can do that one of two different ways. One way is if you have an actual iPhone, you can plug it into your computer and Xcode will be able to install your app onto the phone so that you can physically interact with your app and test it. If you don't have a physical device, don't worry. Xcode comes with what's called an iOS simulator. And you can think of it as a virtual iPhone that will appear on your screen. And then you can interact with your app and test it just like you would on an actual device. All right, now let's say you've finished coding it, you've tested it, and you are ready to launch it. How does it get from Xcode to the App Store? Well, inside Xcode, once your app is ready to go, you compile it. And that's just a fancy word of taking all of the code along with the resources, such as image assets, font files, and packaging it up into a bundle. And then Xcode is going to upload that bundle to a web portal that you can access on the browser. It's called App Store Connect. And once it's uploaded to App Store Connect, you can just log in and you would fill out all of the metadata for the app. Things like the title, the description, the keywords, the categories, the pricing, if it's a paid app. And once you've done that, you hit a button to submit the app for review because Apple needs to make sure that your app follows all of its guidelines and that it doesn't break any of its rules and things like that. And it'll either do one of two things. It'll either approve your app, in which case your app is going to be live on the App Store for people to download. Or number two, it may reject your app and it'll tell you why it's rejected it because of maybe certain things that you need to change. And don't worry, 
There is no penalty for rejection. All you need to do is fix up whatever they ask you and you can resubmit it and they'll look at it again. And this cycle can happen as many times as needed in order to get your app approved. Now, the thing is, in order to get access to App Store Connect to publish your apps, you have to be a member of the Apple Developer Program. There is no requirement to join this program. All you have to do is pay Apple an annual fee of $100 USD. And by doing that, you'll be able to submit as many apps as you want. And as long as you continue to pay that annual fee, your apps will stay on the App Store. So taking a step back, here's what you need to learn. You need to learn how to use Xcode. You need to learn how to read and write Swift code as well as Swift UI code. And you need to learn the process of compiling your app and submitting it to the App Store. Not to worry, those are all things that we will cover in this series. So by the end of it, you're going to have everything you need in order to start building your own apps. It's time to roll up our sleeves and jump right in. In the next lesson, we'll download and install Xcode and I'll show you how we use it to build apps. Oh, by the way, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one support, live training, courses, and a community to motivate and keep you accountable, check out CWC+. Visit this link, enter in your email address, and I'll send you a heads up when it's live. All right, I'll see you there.